promotional consideration paid for by the following. Cone Ice. Cone Ice is a shaved ice truck that brings a one-of-a-kind tropical experience to you. Guests can flavor their own Kona Ice on our signature flavor wave, dance to our island music tunes, and enjoy a nutritious and delicious treat. Contact Jeremy and Marissa at 352-403-0515. Don't forget to follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Pat's Taps at Catfish Johnny's. Pat's Taps is Lake Penasofsky's newest tap room, offering 14 rotating craft beers on tap. We also offer bottled domestic beers, seltzers, ciders, and wine, as well as a variety of appetizers and puffs. Our family-friendly tap room is a great place to come hang out and enjoy some one-of-a-kind craft beer. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or the Untapped app. Is the exterior of your home or business covered in dirt, mildew, or mold? Driveway or walkway stain? Pressure King can make your siding, deck, vents, and concrete look new again with no damage. Pressure King has cleaned the exterior of houses and businesses all over Sumter County area. Usually it takes less than a day and costs less than you would expect. Call AJ at 352-457-7209. Catfish Johnny's Restaurant, serving the Lake Penasofsky and surrounding areas since 1990. For the last 33 years, we have strived to serve great food at great prices and a friendly, casual atmosphere. If seafood isn't your thing, our burgers or wings are the best around. We have daily specials too. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram for more information. Central Screen Services LLC, in collaboration with Mask and Sons Incorporated. All screen services are available. We offer a variety of colors, durability, and sizes for all your screening needs. Pool areas, patios, and more. Call 352-603-4099 today for your free estimate. Proudly serving all of Citrus, Sumter, Hernando, Lake, and Pasco counties. To find out more, check them out on Facebook. Today we have a special guest. This is a, a good friend of the of the program, um, one of our first guys to go out and 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 get it. Um, <laughs> I want to welcome uh, Clinton Hart. Clinton, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, glad to have me. Glad to be here, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, it's it's an honor. He he saw something in me, right? And so he uh, he told me that, and I took it. And every day I was listening for that yell. I was listening for him to yell at me. Come on, coach, yell at me one time. <laughs> Let me know if I'm yeah. still here. And so I end up um, making a name by myself. And, and, and I always told myself, if you're where the ball is, the camera's going to see you because the camera's going to follow the ball. Right. So right. Everywhere, everywhere the ball was, I was running. Yeah. Real, I, 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 no matter what, I made sure 33 was in front of the camera. I was looking back to make sure 33 is <laughs> in the camera. And then the coach would say, yeah. one number 33, you're all over the place. In the meeting in front yeah. of all the veterans. Yeah, was that was, was, Reed was there, right? N- Reed was there. You know, funny story about Reed though. R- Reed was there. Um, Jim Johnson was the defense coordinator. Okay, He's a legend. Yeah, 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 loved yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, loved him. Uh, when Brian Dawkins hurt his foot, and what's crazy about that is he broke his foot in a video game in training camp. Oh, what I mean by that is. When when you're playing when you're in training camp they give you video games to keep you busy and right, occupied. Right. So we were playing. My buddy was playing. You know, Scott uh, Tim, um, Adams. He was playing a video game, and um, it was the season. You know, with the you know, the Eagles, and he runs in and says to me, "I'm studying." He said, "Hart, you you in the game?" Brian Dawkins hurt his foot in the game because he's playing the stimulant you know, where he can get hurt. And he runs in there and says it, and I run out there and I'm looking at my stats and everything's 50 yeah madden couldn't rate me because i didn't play college right so everything's just 50 everything's average right because he couldn't say he's an 80 speed he's a 90 speed or right. he's tackles like this he didn't know what to do so he just put everything 50 <laughs> so just right down the middle so right down the middle let's just make him average <laughs> so but i look at it and i was like my face is on there now. it says from bushnell florida i'm like Wow, man, I'm on a video game. And he's like, Yeah, man, but you suck, dude. I mean, they put you in. And Brian Dawkins got hurt. That year, he hurt himself just like the video game. Oh, wow. The first game against wow. the Bucks. Two wow. minutes left. Two minutes left in the game. 
four minutes left in the game. He broke his foot, just like in the game. Dang. They turn around and they said to me, Hart, I thought I would never play. You're like, but I'm a 50. But I'm a 50. Now you no, want me now in. Now you want me in with all this you pressure. You talking about me. <laughs> but I was, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I go in with four minutes left. Yeah. And Andy Reid's asked in an interview after that, What's the, who's the backup for Brian Dawkins? It's going to be, you know, the young guy. He said, uh, what's the kid's name? He said, you know, they really brought, they, the media came to me with that. Said, what is the kid's name? Uh, uh, and then he asked his publicist, what's his name? <laughs> and he said, Clint Hart, coach. <laughs> said, yeah, Clint Hart. Oh. And so they came in and said to me, after because I, I went to my locker with nobody behind me. All right. And then after the game, I turned around and every camera was behind me, like asking me questions about, so it's your, you know, you're stepping in for Brian Dawkins. How are you, how are you going this yeah. and how are you going that and how you, what do you expect from yourself? And, and I'm wow. like, no, and nobody taught me this. That's what's crazy. Nobody taught me how to speak to the media. And I said to myself, I said, calm your spirit. Don't say nothing silly. Yeah. And I said, I'm just a backup. Brian Dawkins is our leader. He's a he's he's a guy that I'm stepping in for right now. Um, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of you know this team and, and what I can do to bring to this team. But right. I'm just a backup. Right. And he's our guy and can't wait till he gets back. Yeah. They kept asking me the same thing. Yeah. To try to get me to change. And I kept saying the same thing. I was almost like Michelle Lynch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hear <laughs> but, it so I don't get fined. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I said it in a, in a way that it made him respect me. Right. And then he started coaching me. Yeah. Because I was there to take his job, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then because he wouldn't talk to me for a while. Oh. And his locker was like one locker down. <laughs> he had two lockers, actually. Yeah. He has a Weapon X and a Brian Dawkins. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, he has two lockers. He turns into X Man before the video. <laughs> no, literally. If you <laughs> Does he lay his clothes out like Dion used to? No, but that? he has a locker with. It's like a dead person on the ground. They, no. He lays his socks, his <laughs> no. pants out. He has a locker that has claws in it and, a, and figurines. Oh, of, yeah, the, it's like he, he the, thinks he he's li- super, super. He literally man. turns into that. Wow. He has a locker to call it Weapon X, and he has Brian Dawkins. Wow. After the game, he turns into Brian Dawkins. He's- during the game, he's sitting in that locker. So if you ever watched him come out uh, before a game, he comes out like a Wolverine, like crawling, like out of the tunnel, full speed. <laughs> so when I saw that, he really took me like, you know, it really blew my mind. I was like, right. and he's a, this guy is a Christian. I have the utmost respect for him. Yeah. You will not hear him curse. Yeah. I've never heard him curse. Oh, wow. I've never heard him swear. Even in the meeting, even with the DBs, and he's getting us hype. He never used God's name in vain, nothing. He says stuff that makes you confused if you're playing football. He'll say, we're going to do this, gosh, dog it. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, you normally hear people cursing. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, dang it. You know, and it's like. Uh, you know, so, but you respected him right. for that, right? Because of what he said, you know how he dealt things, how he lived. He lived it. Yeah, he literally lived that. And when he prayed for the team, he prayed for the team. It was right. almost like the room started to move. Right. <laughs> well, I I heard, I've seen video, and I've heard that after you do so many like hype speeches. Because you do it like five or six times before the game starts. Because mm-hmm. you do individuals mm-hmm. and yep. in, in, in position and whatever. Yeah. And uh, they said like um, uh, Ray Lewis, I think it was. He's like, by the time the game started, he was like, pop the trunk on three. And you're like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. what is he talking about? Yeah. Pop the trunk on three. What's, <laughs> yeah. what's in the trunk? What's in the trunk? <laughs> so, I mean, it, I, I get it. But yeah. you know what I mean? It's funny how, how everything's so different. Um and people don't even notice about me. I was a, I was a defensive captain. Yeah. And I broke down the team. Oh wow. I was in the middle of the team. I was getting the team hype. Yeah. You know, team was like, you know, I'm just Clint Hart from Bushnell, Webster. Yeah. yeah. And they got me in the middle of this team, getting all these grown men. Yeah. Come on, Hart, get us up, get us. Up. And I'm like, so that's where it got. That's what led me to do what I do now. Right. 
It's like to motivate people. Motivate gotcha. people. I get that, that makes sense. It goes, uh, yeah, it is. It's like, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, these grown millionaire men yeah. that make way more money than me. Yeah, yeah. they need to be pushed. They, they, they need to be pushed yeah. by me. Yeah. So here I am jumping in hype, jumping around, and I'm getting them hyped. Same thing I did in high school. Yeah. Getting us hyped in high school. Yeah. Now I'm getting them hyped in there. So now I got to get my group hype in my gym. So it's transfer. You, you're going to have to. Before you start one of your sessions, you're gonna say, "Pop the trunk on through." Pop the trunk on. They go like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> Who's in the trunk? What is he talking about? Especially these ladies. I'm Who's a, in the trunk? Yeah, I'm gonna go check my trunk now, <laughs> Susie. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> What's he having? Um, so let me ask you this: like, you, when you were in Philly, um, what were some things that, like, like, how did it feel? First time ever out there. Like, you're starting your first start. So, the, the game after Hawkins, uh, no, Hawkins darn. gets 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 um, hurt, you, who are you playing? What's it like? Are you? It, I think we're playing the Giants, but he came to me and he said, all right, you coming out for me. You got to give him something. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting called out the last person because yeah. he was the last person. So, here I am, the last person yeah. that comes out. And he comes out crawling, like crawling and playing a guitar and like he's dancing. And, and I've seen it. So yeah. I'm like, what are you, what am I, I can't crawl. I, I can't. Do, I don't want to do the air guitar. I don't want to do air guitar. I don't want to be pouncing on the ground like he's doing. So I just go out there and I just make some muscles. <laughs> so, so I just go out there, I stand there and I just turn to the crowd. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to overshadow, try to like I was trying to do yeah. too much. Yeah. I'm like, I can't get out here and try, like I'm trying to outdo Brian Dawkins. Right. So I'm just gonna go out here and make some muscles. Like, hey, listen, I'm strong. Right, I right, think. right. <laughs> I, I hope, oh, I, oh, I hope oh, I do the part. I, I hope I do the part. I will let you down, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I'm 55 now. I'm not 50. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting. So, I mean, I go out there and I'm and I and I did really well. I mean, yeah. I think I had like seven, eight tackles and. Yeah, great outing. They trusted. We went. I think we went seven and two with him absent. Okay, we so went, good. Yep, good. I had a one in hand, fifty yard interception in Dallas that stepped out of bounds barely, and that's the first time I really went up. And this was maybe a year or two ago. I just watched the fin- the game because we don't watch games. We right. watch film, right. so you don't hear the commentators. So I put up all my old games. And I heard them commentators finally after that game. I was watching it, and I made a one-hand interception, and it's barely stepped out. And, and they were talking about it. And he said, well, "Yeah, Andy Reid said this guy is the best athlete on the team. That's 17 years <laughs> removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't never yeah. heard that. Yeah, yeah. Andy Reid said he's the best athlete on the team, and I was like, wow." On the team? Yeah. And then he said, yeah, he told Jim, and he told Jim Johnson, if you ain't going to use him on offense, defense, I got a place for him on offense. And I'm like, why did I ever told this stuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <clears throat> but this is 17 years removed that I had to look well, at a game and hear that. Yeah. Well, I, I think maybe maybe it's because they don't want you to. Well, they don't want to. Well, well, two yeah. is because when I was on a practice squad, my first year I was on practice squad. Mm-hmm. Hey, we need a running back. Got a coach. Need a receiver. Got a coach. Right. Need a kickoff returner. Yeah. Got, we need a third string quarterback. Somebody can throw right. the ball. Got a coach. Dorsey Levins came over to me in a meeting uh, uh, in the locker room, and he said to me, "Dorsey Levins was a big time running back for Green Bay." Oh yeah, I had his jersey. Oh, big guy too. Yeah. Like two twenty five, six three. Yeah. And he said to me, "Hart, I'm gonna call you the natural man because you do everything like you're supposed <laughs> to be doing it." And I got the natural tattooed on my arm because oh, he called me cool. that. That's because cool. he called me that. Cool. And because it was like I wanted to do everything like I was supposed to have been doing it. Right. When I lined up at a receiver, I was like I was the number one receiver on the team. Right. On the scout right. team running back, I tried to look better than Brian Westbrook. Yeah. You know, I was back there taking the, the read steps and it was like, is he a running back? Right. No, but he looks like one. And so everything I did, I tried to make it look like we need this guy. Yeah. And the reason that Jim Harbaugh, they cut me my first year. Yeah. In 2002, they cut me. Jim Harbaugh said, well, they cut me after training camp. Jim Harbaugh said, hey, in this preseason game, I need you 
to be on the hands team because you play baseball, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. They kicked the ball. I said, Coach, I, I'll, I'll get it for you if they kick it to me. Boom, get it. One of my guys offsides. We got to re-kick. He walks over and says, I look him right in his eyes, and this God is my witness. I said, Coach, I'm going to get it again. I'm going to get it again. They kicked it in a different direction from me, and I went and got it, pulled it in and got it. He walked right over to me and said, listen, after the game, he said, we're not going to keep you because we can't, the numbers. Right. But we're going to bring you back. Gotcha. We got to have you back. Yeah. When I told him that, it was something about what I said and I did that built a confidence right. in him to where they cut me. Right. <clears throat> and I came home. Well, when I came home, my dad went to jail. And Kiki was really little. And so my mom was trying to handle things on her own. Right. So I looked at it. I always try to look at a glass half full. Yeah. And I said, this is why I'm home right now. Right. Because she needs my help. Right. To help with my little brother. Right. So I went, end up going to teacher parent meetings, going to school at uh, Webster Elementary where teachers taught me 20 years. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, hey, boo. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. you still here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> we got your little brother in there, and he, you know, he's he's being bad. And I'm like, Kiki was bad. Yeah, my mom he had was him a little, in pre-K. He was a little hellion. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if he was bad in pre-K, but I know she had. Oh, him. He, he, he 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 was, he was a little bad. hellion when he got a little. Oh older. boy, <laughs> I didn't know all that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, he would bite you anything. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's so mean. Yeah. <laughs> so he had it in him. Wow. So uh, I went to those meetings and all, but I always saw it as that. Yeah. And then the lady, Jackie, Jackie, my neighbor, she used to be my bus driver. She said, after I got cut, she said, boo, you do something for the church, they going to call you. I was like, she said, you do something for the church? She said it every time she met me. Yeah. It was almost like he was still putting people in my face to mm-hmm. tell me things. Mm-hmm. And so I never went to the church. I never did anything in a church. Right. But I went to work at the juvenile detention center where we had church. Right. But the pastor didn't show up. And it's 60 kids sitting in there. So now I'm over these 60 kids. And I said, hey, we ain't going back to the dorms. We need to do something because y'all need something. Yeah. So I end up just reading to them. Yeah. And then the pastor walks in late. And he said, no, just keep doing what you're doing. He put me in a position where right. I had to do something for the church. Right. Yeah. That night I got a call from the Eagles. Yeah. My ex, I mean, she was my girlfriend at the time. My ex-wife, she was my girlfriend at the time. She says, she drove up to CFCC where I was working out and said, the Eagles just call you. They want to bring you back and put you on the practice squad. And that's exactly what Jackie was telling me the whole time. If you do mm-hmm. something for the church, they'll call you. Right. And they end up calling me and bring me back. That's where I got the name, the natural. I got put on the practice squad. The following year, they said, we want to sign you to a three-year deal. Mm-hmm. I had no agent. Oh, wow. I got there with no agent. Oof. And so I had to call a buddy of mine while I was sitting in the office that was an agent. And he worked with me for free named John Bermudez. And I love him definitely like a brother now. He worked with me for free. And he told me, sign it, whatever it is, sign it. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. knew where I came from. And it, and it wasn't about negotiating no, to try to get money. or try. It was making sure I had a spot. Right. And so I signed it. Yeah. You know, and that's when I signed my first deal. Oh, wow. So um, who was, uh, I was going to ask you earlier, who who was quarterback? Was that McNabb? McNabb. Okay. McNabb was funny. What, what was it? I was, I've always. He was funny. Is he, is he a nice guy? He's nice. He's funny. Yeah. He's a clown. Yeah. I mean, he would literally, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you come in and meet, you come in, you walk into, and, and Philadelphia had an amazing facility, amazing facility. And you walk in and you got to walk by the workout area. And, and so <laughs> I remember one time walking through there and he's got his afro out, like out, way out. <laughs> and he's just on the treadmill running in a jock strap, just sprinting, uh, just sprinting on the job. Yeah. Eating some canvas. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, what? You know, I'm a young guy. Yeah. I'm like, what is big guy? He's just shaking his head. But you're a young guy. You don't, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that those guys. Yeah. But it was just, Oh man, <laughs> it, those it, it was some fun times. That's what you missed the most. Yeah, <clears throat> you missed the the camaraderie, the fun. Uh, I was driving here, 
and one of my t- free agent teammates. I say free agent because when you're a free agent, you mesh with the other free right, agents. Right, right. Like we brought this right. a brotherhood. You're hoping you'll go together. Yeah, we hope yeah. we go together. Yeah. We, 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 till this day, we appreciate each other because we knew what we were faced with. Right. Uh, first, first rounder, hey, listen, you, you ain't going to talk to me and I ain't going to talk to you because you don't even think I'm going to be here. You know, that's what Brian Dawkins said. That's, we didn't talk to you because we don't expect free agents to be around long. Right. So we don't build relationships with them. Because wow. we don't want to, you know, we, we want to be upset a guy that we like that gets cut. Right. We don't, so we don't even deal with them until we yeah. know where they're going to be here. Or you get attached to somebody. Yeah, you get attached. Yeah. So I'm driving here and my free agent buddy calls me. Marcus Harris played with Chargers. We're like brothers. He said, "What you know? His thing is, where you going, fool? <laughs> you know, he calls me on Facetime. Yeah. I, I ain't talked to him in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going down here to do this podcast with my guy Billy Goble, and da 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 da. And he, you know, he's going somewhere. He's got his little poodles in his back seat. <laughs> I was like, look, look at you. <laughs> but um, it's just, I mean, building those relationships, yeah. you never forget them. Oh yeah, you know, certain guys you just never forget. Right." And 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 it's levels to it. Free agents, yeah, guys that are right there in the middle, yeah, middle class, right, right. <laughs> and then the upper class, yeah. I don't talk to Rivers much. I mean, I'll say, "What's up, Rivers? What's up, Philip?" And he might say, "What's up?" He's gonna keep walking. Wow. <laughs> you know, LT might say a few things to me, but. Yeah, I, I've always wondered, like, do defensive guys stay with the defensive guys? Yeah, you're always sitting in the same area. I, I knew your positioning, like your mm-hmm. position group. And the locker rooms is set up that way. Right, okay. But a lot of those guys like each other, and they, they don't do things with each other. But yeah. when you get on a plane, if you're five years in, yeah, four or five years in, you're in the first class. Yeah. I always wanted to be back with my buddies. I yeah, didn't want to yeah. sit up there with – Philip Rivers and LT and all of them. I didn't. I, first of all, I'm not gonna have a conversation. I'm just gonna sit. I know I'm gonna go to sleep on a plane, but sometimes I like to talk a little bit. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm sitting up there with the owners and Philip and all of them. And I'm like, and I look down at Quentin Jammer's shoes and he's got <laughs> alligator shoes on with eyeballs in them. And I'm like, where am I at? Right? <laughs> like, you have five thousand dollars shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like no, literally, he had an eyeball. Lizard in the shoe. shoes on. He had he had alligator shoes. Oh wow! With the eyeball in the shoe. Oh my god! So I'm just like somebody forgot to take that out. Um, so. No, it's just like it's, <laughs> I've never I'm seen like, that before. Like, like literally, I'm like, <laughs> guys spend a lot of money yeah. on stupid stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> to whereas I said to myself, mm-hmm. I don't, I didn't make uh, like a lot of guys made. Yeah. So it's like. I'm gonna go buy this ninety-nine dollar suit from Big and Tall, and I'm gonna get it tailored to my body. Yeah. So I would go get a yeah, yeah. But I would go get a ninety-nine dollar suit, to whereas guys will walk on with five thousand dollar suits. Right. And whereas me, I'm going to get a ninety-nine dollar suit. But 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 I love. But know what? It was like, man, where you get that suit from? You know, because it's it's tailored. Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers. (laughs) Heck yeah. (laughs) Literally, I mean, people don't understand. And, and I, I like people to know the truth about like a lot of things when it comes to and a lot of people outside the game don't really know what goes on in the game. Right, right. And in the locker room. Right. You know, yeah. So, um, I kind of learned that with Kiki a little bit. Like, yeah. Like going to camp. You see it. I, I, you, okay. So I went up there to the camp like three years in a row. Mm-hmm, I see, saw you. Right. So I go up there. And the first year I went, I was super excited, man. I was like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like Julio Jones. Oh. I love this guy. And I was like, hey, hey, um, Kiki, you know, what's the deal? You, you, is, uh, you know, can you, can you get an autograph or whatever? And he's like, I don't, I don't even talk to that guy. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but I, I think he was kind of scared, of, you know, like not scared. He was noodly. Well, and, you and don't like, talk to him. That's what, but see, I didn't know that. And, and that like might you, be protocol. But you I, think it's, you think it's, you know, your team, you can just walk up to some people ask me all the time, hey, can you get, Get, give me some autographs from such and such. LT, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of scared even to ask yeah. LT for autographs. That's what, that's what, that's the the vibe I got. But I was like, I was like, I was just kind of like half king, like, hey man. And then I firstly saw some things. Do you see I, it that you like did, that someone did Julio? And I was like, I was like, uh, I'm 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 good. I don't, yeah, I'm 
Yeah, you I see, guys, really and I, that's what I used to tell my free agent guys. Man, when you, you know, when we, when we get there to the, the destination where we're playing, right. and people are out there all night, yeah, standing, yeah. Please sign this, sign that, sign this. Got their books, the kids. Yeah, and yeah they might want to sell it. I don't know what they want to do. Right. Um, but I always told my buddies, I said, "Hey, man, they ain't gonna want this stuff from us a couple years from now." Yeah, it's true. So. I'm signing that's everything. I'm true. signing everything. They're going to, have to pull me off these people. Stop signing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the security right. would be like, "All right, Clint, Clint, Mr. Right. Hart, let's go, right. Coach. Hart, I mean, uh, Mr. Hart, we got to go. Right. We got to go. Forty-two, let's go." Right. And I'm like, "No, I got a couple more. I got a couple yeah. more. I'm, I'm getting pulled away while yeah, I'm signing yeah, this baby's yeah. forehead." <laughs> but, but see, but see, something like that goes a long way more than someone who just goes by. And oh, I used to see it all the time. And, and that's, 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 the, that's that was the experience I had with 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 Jones is, is he'll walk right by you. Oh, and I was sitting with the coaches and players, like yeah, you families. Could, you could be. I wasn't in the public. No. I was in there, and he like avoided everybody. Yeah, him and Ryan. Yeah, so they're not on my favorite list. Yeah, so I'm but, like, and that's what I'm saying is like, it's almost like a responsibility. Yeah. I would say to that, a degree. I, I agree if I'm at that. dinner, that's yeah. different. It, absolutely. If you are on a football field and you're walking off the football field, absolutely. stop and sign yeah. 15, 10, 15 autographs. Um, yeah, we were Tuesday. We went to uh, last Tuesday. Went to uh, the, see the Pirates and mm-hmm. uh, Pirates and Blue Jays. And McCutcheon's back. I mm-hmm. love Andrew McCutcheon, man. Mm-hmm. Florida boy. Yep, yep. He's a pirate. Yep. Went to the, the farm system. Love this guy. Never. I, I have never gotten his autograph. And you can tell I've got all these yeah, baseballs. Yeah, you got here, a lot right? of baseballs. Okay, I, and I'm not selling them. Those are right. my. Those are mine. Um, so I've never. So I, it was six inning. He's going to hit one more time. I said he's going to leave after this. I, yeah. I, just, I know the system. He hits. Um, get they three outs. They get done. He grabs the stuff and he leaves. And I'm already down there by the locker mm-hmm. room. I've got I've got Jace with me. He's nine. Right. And. Um, Totally walks by both of us, just like, they and, I, and I told Jace, I was just like trying to make it light of the situation, like, you know, hey, he's got, he's, Somebody's, he's, t- he's probably tired, yeah, he's probably <laughs> hot. trying to make light of it, right? But I was like, uh, and but there was only like five or six of us, and yeah. I'm, 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 I get it, I, I understand people are going by like, well, but that that's their, but that's also a response, like you said, a response. It's, it's a rough, it comes with the job, it comes, with, it comes with the thing, you're right. <laughs> Me, not so much, but. With the other yeah, kids, there was kids. like five or six other kids there. So, um, but so I get that, and so that's why I like I don't I understand, but then again, like they're in that predict that that position because we love it, yeah, you know. And it's like just and if nobody watched and nobody cheered, right. you wouldn't make money, right? You right. wouldn't be getting paid right. if nobody came to the games right. and nobody tuned in, right? So. So the thing that I challenge a lot of people to do is that you never know who you're standing next to. True, true. I mean, I could be in a grocery line and I see a kid that's an athlete, honestly, and I say to him, a lot of them don't, may not know who I am, and they may have never met a football player or anything. Right. And I say, what sport you play? And they'll say, I play football. Where do you play? You don't play football. And I try to spark a conversation, make them feel good. <laughs> and I say, you don't play no football. I bet I can outrun you. And I just start a conversation yeah. with them. And then I'll say <clears throat> something. I'll say, you know, where, they play MCYFL. And I say, well, you play MCYFL? I played in the NFL. And they're like, yeah. they'll look at me kind of. Yeah. And it's like, you did? And I was like, play in the NFL. Yeah. And I'll take my picture and I'll show them me in the NFL. Right. And it's, <clears throat> it's to give that kid an opportunity right. to meet somebody that could possibly change his whole oh, yeah. Yeah. thinking process. Definitely. Because you don't know who's next to you. Right. And you act, you'll act, sometimes you act different just because you found out who a person is. Right. Wait a minute, who's that? You know, right, right, you know, right, 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 right. You know, so I shake this kid's hand and I give him a po- uh, uh, give him a positive, some positive. If you want to be your best, be the first day and last to leave. Right. Encouragement. That's what Coach Sherman always told me. Right. First day and last. So I try to pass things I've learned. Yeah. Because me just saying, hey, you play football, where you play it? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a coach of the trinity high school yeah. is not as much of an impact as a kid knowing right you play where yeah you oh you did you know yeah so i, I try to do that as much without being boastful and bragful is right. i find a kid that right. maybe by himself or with a with his mom or whatever right so 
I mean, I think that's the responsibility of a lot of guys. So you you had your stint in Philadelphia. Now mm-hmm. I do remember one time you had a, like you had this really good hit. I was like either on kickoff or special teams or something. And you and you made it was a top ten ESPN like a Sports Center top. Yeah, 10. It, I mean I, I've, I've got. And I'm not I, saying I that's have, the only one. But yeah, no, but it's I, the one that I remember. Yeah, that kind of. I haven't had I, one thing that you do in NFL, and I try to tell Keanu this is, you know, when I first got into the league, it was way late people. Yeah, you know, and being a no name sometimes. Right. I mean, not a no name, but being a, not a popular name coming out of college. You know, media can make or break you based on oh, how yeah. much they blow up what you do. Right. How much they stay on what you do. Right. Like. I've seen where somebody does something simply, totally simple and average, and they get, oh, this guy is that and that, this and this, and you just watch him, just yeah, and now they brought all this light to him, to where I know I've done things, um, uh, and it's, you know, oh, that was Clint Harden, and it's on to the next thing, right? You know, um, right? No different than the politics and Pro Bowl voting. You know, I know 2007, I think I had almost 100 tackles and five or six interceptions. And 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 you get a sheet. Mm-hmm. And that's who you pick. You go by who's leading everything. Right. Well, Palomalo got picked before me. He had 54 tackles, no interceptions. He only played right. nine games. I had 100 ta- 106 tackles, five interceptions, this many games. Mm-hmm. He got picked before me. He couldn't go because he was hurt. They went to Bethel that was then less than me with 70-something tackles with four interceptions because they were familiar names. Right. You know, so I, I really got – if they were going by statistics and right. what they normally supposed to go by, then I would have made that Pro Bowl my, that year. Was that still when the players voted or was Players voted. Okay. Media and everybody. Right. I mean, like the fans and and, and, every, and, the, and the players voted too. Right. And so what fans do, they go with familiar names. Yeah. They look for names. Oh, Tony Gates, I'm putting him in. Yeah. They don't even know what he had on stats. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> yeah, that's, it's popularity. It's thing. popularity. But thing. I will tell you this, I don't, and I don't, just me being a Cowboys fan, I do know that in '92 or '93 they had the best defense in the league. Mm-hmm. Nobody, on the nobody. Pro nobody, nobody, nobody. It, it's just crazy how that works. Yeah, and they're like, we have the number one defense. Yep, nobody's going. No one defense. No one going to Pro Bowl. Yeah. And it's all about who people like at that time, or, right. or you know. So, I mean, and that goes with a lot of it, uh, uh, you know, in the in the league. It's a pol- very political. And I don't even watch football now. Really, I watch Kiki. Yeah, I don't watch football. Yeah, I, I see it as a a, a business. And, and it's become more of a business, right. even in college now. That right. it's almost disgusting to me to right. watch because the guys before the guys that are playing now are being able to, and it ain't even as violent as it was no. back then. No. It's so much more lenient. Oh man, it's so it's, it's so it's, hard on it's defense. Pa- it's it's, yeah, it's hard. You don't even know who to hit that, anymore. That wide receiver knows where he's going. Those DBs have no, no idea. Have, yeah, so you trying to tell me to pull up and do this, and I'm trying to yeah. figure out how I'm gonna hit this guy. So I mean, it's patty cake, patty cake a lot of times. And these kids, the, these young men, are making. I mean, get your money, take care of your family, but they're making so much money. It's like basketball players too. Right. They get paid all this money and they don't want to play. Right. Oh yeah, I'm eighty yeah. percent. I don't feel like playing. I'm yeah, exactly. Or I'm hurt. <sighs> Come on, seriously. I, yeah, I got this. I mean, Rodney Lott cut tip thing. of his finger off. Yeah, it, right. Put me in the game. Put me in the I game. I want to play. What do you take it off? Take it off. Yep. I mean, I remember getting shot at with cortisone numerous times. Yeah. Because of injuries, like, yeah. hey, shoot me up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um. There's a there's a line between like we always. I've talked with some coaches before, and they're like, you know, it's not supposed to be life changing money, right? And this NI deal, <laughs> NIL deal, whatever it yeah, is, NIL. It, it, it's not. It's this is life changing. It's money. It, it's it's it, it's you. They're buying right the talent, right? They're buying the, the kids are going where they where the money is instead of where their passion is, right? A kid can love the University of Florida to death all his life, right? But then here comes. Georgia giving him six million dollars. Right. I mean, right. and he his heart's with Florida, but it's like, right. oh, I gotta go where the money is. Yeah. And then not so much as that is the parents are yeah. involved now. Yeah. Hey, parents are taking money up front. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, so it's you know, sad. It's funny because then they then they penalized Reggie Bush. They penalized <laughs> everybody that did it before. They took his Heisman. From they took him. his Heisman. And Give him his like, Heisman back. They're like, hey, you know, you bought a house for your mom, or someone did. Someone did. And that was that was illegal. Yeah, but now yeah. we're just going to do it. You're talking about blatantly. It. Yeah. I always give the the example of the guy that's in California. I, I think he's supposed to be going this year, but Tennessee mm, got yes. him for eight million dollars hey, for three years, and he's on, never man. even been. He's never even hit the field yet. That's a disrespect to anybody who plays that position at a high level. I I, I totally agree. That is a disrespect that, uh, and it don't. That's a total blatant disrespect for guys that played at a high level that bust their tail to get to the NFL. Right. To to prove themselves, right? You never you never even played. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They have a whole nother level on you, and you, you, you know what I mean. This There's how a, this how stupid is that 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 the, the whole deal is. So I mean, what are you going to do with every other sport? Right, right. You gotta you gotta you gotta somehow. Keep, yeah, but you are you just going to make football the the be all the be all? You know, right. like. We oh we don't do any nil deals for any volleyball players or anything like right. that. Any girl volleyball? No, so you want to treat them treat them all the hey, same. Yeah, across the board. Across the board, that spread the it. wealth out. That's right. Wanna, <laughs> you give right. one kid eight million dollars, and it's like, you know, and then they they do the comparison where they're like, well, SEC versus like you know d- these these independent or whatever. <laughs> well, you know, it's got to come. They, they got to they got to figure it out. They got to figure it out. And, it's uh, really going to it's really messing up football. I agree. Um and coach coach Sherman and I talked about it. And I I just said, you know, how how do these even in high school, you know, we got we got these rules where you don't even have to like you could play football at South Southampton then go to go to Leesburg Come and on. play basketball. That don't that don't even make sense. It, it's crazy. That don't make sense. I mean, it's no loyalty and no commitment. And that's what you're teaching these kids if I'm not happy. Right. I'm jumping in the portal. Or I don't get my way. I don't get my way. I'm not playing. I'm jumping I don't in get the reps. portal. Right. But I got I kind of got off I may have gotten off the subject for a minute, but I wanted to ask you, you're going to San you go to San Diego. Mm-hmm. San Diego and Philly. Difference? Oh yeah, totally different. The, we- <laughs> the weather definitely weather one. <laughs> the weather definitely uh you know, playing in ten degree weather compared to seventy five. Yeah. Beautiful rains probably thirty times a year in, oh, wow. in, in California. Um, beautiful. The fans are nice. <laughs> yeah, they don't boo, they don't boo, boo Santa Claus. They don't they don't they don't throw you, things. You know, I have a I have a buddy of mine, and uh, I always bring it up because I'm a Cowboys fan. He's a Philly fan, and we always twice a year are always at each other. And I always make a comment like, "Well." At least my team never booed Santa Claus. Oh, they boo everybody. And he's like, "That's a that's an old." I'm like, I'm "No, like, they literally <laughs> boo everybody." We, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, and they also cheered when Michael Irvin broke his neck. Oh my god, laying on, the, on that mat. Uh, yeah, I don't understand these, yeah. some of them. I mean, To uh, leaves and goes to Dallas, and everybody bring a casket uh-huh. to the game, yep. a, a Burn real casket. Jersey. Yeah, everybody. Oh yeah, and everybody's throwing their earned money. <laughs> Some hardcore people out there. Yeah, oh my gosh! I'm like they got it out there in the parking lot, just on fire. Yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> well, in ten degree weather, that would help. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. Help, yeah. I mean, it's a cheap fire yeah, would get a pine box. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but um, San Diego, you, you get the you get the chance to play with the, the legendary Marty, mm. Marty Schottenheimer. Uh, I have I have a picture with him that will you know it's very unfortunate the way that he uh, yeah. everything happened with him. Um, it's very unfortunate it happens to anybody. Right. Um, and it's very sad because, you know, all those memories. Yeah. Dementia is pretty the, bad. It's... Yeah. The memories and stuff that he, you know, he didn't get to relive. Right. Uh, toward his later days. Um, but I have a, a game in Seattle that I remember the most. I had two interceptions. I could have had a third. I knocked it down. It was at the end of the game. And he walked over to me and I got a picture on Facebook. I'll never forget it. Probably get it blowed up. He shook my hand, looked me right in the face, and said, "You're one hell of a player." Wow, that's awesome. Um, and I don't think it's just because I got two interceptions. Yeah, I think it's because of the, the unselfish play. Right. Because I was so high when I got up to get that one, I just knocked it, you know, knocked it down. Yeah. And he, I could have been greedy, went up with two hands and got a third interception for statistics. Yeah. Um, or for statics, uh, stats. Um, but um, 
he said to me that, and he said that to me, and I will never forget that. And he was a coach that could say things to you that you're kind of almost wondering where is he going with it. Yeah. And then when he comes back around, your eyes start getting big like, oh, that's what he's talking about. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> to whereas North Turner was different. Yeah. Oh, you played with Norv. I forgot. No, yeah. They, well, they fired Marty. Because okay. 14, okay. We went 14 and 2. Oh, my God. 14 and 2. How you fire? That lets you know, right? That let me know right Something's going on. That let me know right there the NFL's not, wow. you know, something that I want to be involved in after I'm done. Right. People are like, you could have talked on TV or broadcast. Or whatever. I mean, you're so good with the camera. Blah, blah. I say, when I'm done with this, I'm done. Yeah. This is just a job. People call me, oh, you're the NFL. But no, I'm Clint. That was a job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, because I saw how they did a great man and how they would shun him out. Yeah. Like the GM would sit in a different area and he would sit over by himself. And I'm like, this ain't even how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, you know, and they traded guys without letting him know. Yeah. And I was like, he would come to work and his quarterback would be gone. You know, Cleo Lemon, a guy that he loved. You know, it's like, but AJ Smith didn't like him. But mm. Marty, and because Marty was a coach like Coach Sherman, he was a hard right. nose. Right. Hey, we're going to play smash <clears throat> mouth football, hit yeah. you in the face. Right. We're coming right at you, and you're going to stop us. That right. was Marty's mentality. Nor yeah. was like philosophy. Hey, listen, let's draw up this and make this look pretty like this and do this and do this. And and it was, it's a mindset, gentlemen. Right. It's a, he would say that over and over again. It would get redundant to me. Like, Hey, it's a mindset, gentlemen, and that's exactly how you would relay it to right. us. And I'm like, here he goes with the same old thing. <laughs> <laughs> to whereas Marty would give us these Lombardi speeches. Yeah. And you like, he literally had us, we were out practice for 45, we practiced, we was out for 45 minutes. And guys were loafing. Yeah. Get back in the locker room. Get it started from the top. We started the in. Entire practice over, over from the locker room. Wow. Not start over where you are. Start over. <laughs> go back in the locker room. Reset. Guys had to go all yeah. back in the locker room, wow. sit down in their chairs, wow. <laughs> get up, wow. and start over. And he did that. Wow. And you couldn't help but respect it. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I um, I like to, uh, when I'm coaching um, Wolfpack, I like to um, say finish, finish, finish. Oh, that was one, one of his famous. His thing was, that's his thing is. One play at a time. Yeah. One play at a time yeah. and finish, gentlemen. Yeah. Yep. A lot of people don't realize how crucial that is to finish what you start. What and, you start. And a lot of kids need that. They need yep. to finish. Especially out, now. You know, what what they're going to be, you know, you can't go on to the next play without finishing the first one. You got to you know? finish. You got to finish it. Right. It, finish your blocks. Finish your run. Right. All that. Finish the catch. So you said you had Norv. Oh, yeah. What, what, that was my ending Years was he was he okay? I mean, like he was a good coach, a good yeah. offensive minded coach, but he was a soft coach. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I've heard I've heard about that. He's a soft coach. But Troy Aikman yeah. talks about him all the time because that's who that's who the Cowboys had in the nineties. Uh, yeah, he's a soft coach. And, I, I know if you came into Marty's meeting late, not yeah. even late on time, you were late. You were late. Yeah. And he would sit right at the door. Yeah. Where you come in at, you know, right at the door. So I remember right. Drayton Florence coming in late. Like not even a, a second late. Yeah. <laughs> get out. and find him five thousand dollars. Oh man. You know, get out. Get get out. I mean, you you cannot. And I I always told myself, Coach Sherman always told me this: be the first there. Yeah. And the last to leave. Right. If you're on time, you're late. Yeah, that is true. So, <laughs> but but that goes a long way because if if. If you know sports don't work out and you have a job, yeah, you you, you got to figure it out. And you you're always you yeah, know yeah, you're on always, the button. Well, pre preparation. Marty said something that I always loved. He had it written on our wall up front because we had an auditorium that we sit in. We sat in before you do any meetings. The will to win in life is not as important as the will to prepare to win. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to win. Yeah, a lot of people don't prepare. No, and then they lose and wonder why they lost. Oh yeah, That's so. So preparation is a key. Yeah. For games, uh, NFL's a game where the preparation is what wins the games. All right. those guys are pretty much equal. Right. Player for player, you're pretty much equal. Right. Exactly. You know, 
you got first rounds on this team. I got first rounds on my team. Yeah. You second rounds, third rounds, all in free agents. Mm-hmm. But who prepares the best mostly right. wins the games? Right. S- scheming, planning. Yeah. And, it, you know, we were talking about going back to Coach Sherman, we were talking about bowls, how they were. They may not have – I mean, they had the kids, mm-hmm. but they always executed so well. They were disciplined. Mm-hmm. And I think that's – no matter what kind of talent you have, you I think execute. that's a key. Like, you have to – you, you can't have the mental errors. You can't you gotta, have the – You got to execute. And that's one thing the NFL does not – you won't last long Yeah, with MEs. MEs, mental errors. Yeah. Talent, you right. can beat me because you're just better than me. Right. But if, if he's just faster than you, he's faster. But if you're running in the wrong direction – Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to get out of here, right? You know and that's what they didn't tolerate. Would they would they call you at like? Obviously, I've seen it on like Hard Knocks, but would they call literally call you out if you in a meeting? Some, yeah, yeah they're embarrassing. Oh yeah, team team meeting or whatever. Oh, it's embarrassing. Oh my, sometimes. Gosh. Yeah, Hart, what are you doing? What are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, or, or Thomas, what, what are you doing right here? <laughs> what are you, I mean, do you see this guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got the pin the corner the right corner over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing you dreaded, right? Is watching film right. when you know you messed up yeah. more than once. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of kids, um, a lot of kids that hate me most of the time because I film and oh I, yeah, you got yeah, you can pull them like, out. They're like, oh, big brother up there. Uh, <laughs> well, the I, the reason I became a uh, a captain, I was voted to captain because of the, the players, right? Because people would be on their phones in meetings, right? And I'm like, hey man, get off your phone. Hey, get off your phone. Yeah. I was like the police. I was a phone police. Yeah. I was like, hey, man, focus. Wake up. Wake him up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I just felt it was, it was an obligation to everybody else that was paying attention. Right. Like, right. I don't need you messing up on the field. Right. That's preparation. We, I need to know you to know what you're doing. It's like if I'm asleep, hey, accountability, wake me up. Right. And if you ain't coming to the gym, you need to, I'm going to reach out to you. Right. So I've kind of tried to build that same leadership like hey listen hey you slacking right let's go you're not blo- same i remember billy hayes snapped the ball on the wrong count in a game in high school he's my center and he jammed my finger i believe i almost kicked him right in the butt in the game <laughs> <laughs> it's like dude <laughs> I mean, I hit him so hard on his backside with my hand because he snapped it on one and I said on two. <laughs> he always broke my finger. That's why we're going to go now. That's why we're going to go. We don't, yeah. we don't have to. We're no, going yeah. to mess that up. Yeah, we're going to mess it up every time. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. You, you're speaking about all the all the work and stuff you do and stuff. Where did that hard work come from? Where- my, my, you know, my grandparents – to this day, I mean, I know they're older now, but they worked into their eighties, uh, driving a, the goat. Uh, my granddad drive the goat. You're not a, like a literal goat. Oh yeah, it's it was like you had a goat. <laughs> no, it's, like, it's a thing that picks up orange buckets, orange growth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Orange yeah, is yeah, the, the, the arm. The, the grab. The, it yeah. grabs it. Yep. So he drove them to his. You know, they call that the goat. They call it a goat. Oh okay. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Yeah, that's, it's, that's it's called a goat. Oh, that's cool. So I don't know why it's called. Yeah, a goat. I mean, th- it's probably called a goat because it's a, it picks up a lot of stuff and yeah. it, it does its job. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> um, but um, he, he and my grandma did too, and uh, then my mom she works her tail off. You know, even to this day, she like, mom, you don't have to work. Ah, I want to work. I, I want to keep working. Now I'm not oh on my, my own. Gosh. Well, I want my own. Now she yeah. she don't want nobody to give her anything. Yep. And, and my dad's always, you know, did did his part. I mean, um, and so, but she held it together. Yeah. My mom held it together for all of us. Yeah. And then my dad came around, three sixty, loving for his strength to be able to turn around because a yeah. lot of people can't turn around from a lot of their demons. Right. And he was able to do that full throttle. Right. Um, so I, I think seeing him work hard at changing the way that he was and right. seeing my mom work hard over the years, really, and then seeing her struggle was my why. Like, you got to change this. Yeah. You can change it. Yeah. Like, people don't understand. You can be a generational, you know, change. Right. You, you, can, you can make everything different. Mm-hmm. And so seeing... That made me different. And then seeing that made me want to be different for Kiki. Right. And say, okay, now he's watching me. And I remember telling him when he was 12 in Tampa, watching me play in Tampa. I said, look, bro, come here. Come to the edge of the field. It was before the game. And he got all the way down on the south end 
because they were sitting down there and I said, you can do this too, but you got to want it. Right. I said, you look out here, you can do this. Right. You can do it better than I'm doing it. Right. And he was only 12. Mm-hmm. Those words resonated in his mind. Right. And now he's with the Bucks. You know, so it, it just good seeds. Yeah. Plant good seed. And and so it was it's pretty awesome that uh, when he went to the Bucks, I was like, God, that's where I told him he can yeah. do it all. Isn't that funny? And now he's here. You know, it, it's funny. In, in high school, um, I uh, touched base a little bit with um, Coach Sherman about this. But Kiki literally took it as a job. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, you know, all the other kids. I'm not, And it wasn't, I don't want to say everybody, but, you know, majority. Um, you know, most of them were like. Just going through hey, the motions. Yeah, they're like, they're like, hey, what are we going to do tonight? You know, what are we going, doing this weekend? Going through the motions. And Kiki was, I don't care. I don't care if I say it to one person 50 times. I'll tell them. Yeah. Just, just focused. Yep. A constant professional. Just like, and he's. I remember I took him home one time, and um, we got pulled over. I had to tell – all right, my, my tag light, light was out. He pulled over. Then the officer comes around, and I said – he said, let me carry your stuff. And I said, yeah, hand it to him. And he says, I need to have everybody's – IDs. IDs. Mm-hmm. I said, Kiki, where's your ID? And he goes, Coach, I don't have one. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm thinking he's a grown man. Yeah. You- and I go – Kiki, what are you talking about? Yeah. He, he yeah. goes, Coach, I'm 15. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's 15. He's, <laughs> sir, he's 15. Yeah. yeah. And um, I'll never forget that. But but it, but it was like, he goes, Because the way he carries. He goes, so. Really? You look 30. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, and No, th- I can vouch for him. Yeah. He's 15. And he, the thing that he, people, you know, for him is I always told him, You got to work when nobody's watching. Yeah. And then he would be out there sometimes, say, even when it's raining. Because the way I, I always tell myself is how do I get an edge on all the other people trying to make it to the league? Right. Okay, they got a twenty four hour gym. It's one in the morning. Everybody's at clubs. Yeah. I'm going to the gym. Yeah. So I always and even on Sundays he would go up to the South Sumter and work out in the rain. Mm-hmm. So I said, bro, the the football guys they gotta be watching. You know, you ain't you know that's all you need to watch. Right. You need to watch you. What you do when nobody else is watching is the biggest thing. Right. You can show out when everybody. You can be a show pony. Yeah. You can be a show pony. Yeah. When, when it's time to you know go out there and look pretty in front of everybody. But what what are you doing when nobody's looking? Is right. Is, that's true character. Right that's there. true. That's it true is. character. Yeah. Like can can you grind when nobody's behind you yelling in your ear? Absolutely. So he 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 grabbed hold of that and 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 I really do believe. You know, Kiki's very competitive, and when he saw me out there, he wanted to do it too. Yeah, um, and you could tell by the way he played. He played hard. Oh, he played hard. Uh, played fast. And he plays violent. Yes. You know, and I and I tell him all the time. I said, "Bro, you, you got to be smart." Yeah. Um, a lot of people would ask me like when he got hurt in those couple seasons. Yeah, it's like, and I told him, I said, to be honest. I'm surprised that hadn't hurt. It hadn't happened sooner. Yeah, yeah. Just, just by the way he's so physical. Yep. You know. And and, and I told him that, and, and people don't even know Kiki was going to go back to Florida. He oh, wasn't. Right. He wasn't even going to come out. Really. He asked me. He said, "Bro, can you sit and talk to my coaches?" That's when Mc McQuain, Mc, Mc, the Florida coach, was there. McQuain. Uh, McQuain. McQuain. Yeah, McQuain. It's four coaches came to my gym. Yeah. Sat in my heart's corner area. Kiki, me, my mom, and my dad. And they were asking him. They were trying to get him to come back, and they had a $3 million insurance policy they would put on him in case he got hurt. And they, my mom and dad don't know how to talk to those people because they don't know, and Kiki loves Florida, and he don't know what to say. And I'm right. like, he got to go. I'm sorry, Coach, but he got to get. He got to leave. He, yeah. can't, he can't take a risk at going back and getting hurt. Right. And he got hurt that first NFL game. Yeah. So if he don't make that decision to go then, right, he potentially gets hurt his first college game right. and his stock goes down. But you know what else is ironically funny is when I say when I say funny is like your path you had it kind of set up. So Quinn gets mm-hmm. him to Florida, mm-hmm. Quinn drafts him, mm-hmm. and then Quinn brings him to the Cowboys. Yep. So you talk about related instances where you know what I mean, like you. It's just how it's laid out. It's so I'm going to show you something even deeper. Two birds that fly is the highest in the world. 
is an eagle and a falcon. Yeah, that's that is that's funny. So, my first team was the Eagles. His first team was the Falcons. Right. I broke my ring finger in a game, going through marriage problems. So I broke my ring finger in a game. There was all signs to me like, "Hey, listen, your marriage is broken. Fix it or something." Right. You know. So I, I kind of didn't really pay attention to it. Broke my ring finger in the middle of a game, dove in a diving at a ball. And I didn't think nothing of it. Kiki sends me a picture of it <laughs> in a game walking with his hand. And he was going through some situational problems. This was after I retired. His ring finger was crooked. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was turned. Mm -hmm. It was dislocated. That's right. He wasn't married. He was just in a relationship. Right. I was married. Mine got broken. Yeah. His was just dislocated. So he needed to get some things in order. Right. So I always look at things like he was finishing what God has started for me. Right. You know, to tell him on that field right. in Tampa, you can do this. Yeah. For him to almost pretty much be about to end there. And I think they're going to bring him back. I think they want to keep him. Yeah. Um, just trying to find the money. <laughs> and that's uh, how it all comes that's down to. That's how it man. comes down to. But just seeing how it all tr right. r laid out. Right. It's like he's finishing what I, what he started with me. If I had it my way, I'd have Quinn bring him back to the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> and play his original position, uh, of course. Yeah, I, and that, that's the thing is uh, when he played linebacker. I'm it like, wasn't I'm for like, him. I'm like, you oh, can't move from. It was a nice try. Well, you can't move from back to front. No, 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 no. You can move from front to back. Right. Because things are slower. Right. But it's like Earl Everett was one of the, one of the best athletes to come through South Sumter. You know, um, you know I would say it's a lot of great athletes. Mm -hmm. I would, and when I say that, um, I don't put myself above him or anybody. I say top, top fifteen athletes to come through. It's a lot of good athletes right. from Timmy Dorsey to Roosevelt. So a lot of people don't think about the older guys, right. Pop Everett. Right. Yeah, so Pop, I, yeah. I go way back. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I say top fifteen, top twenty guys, right. one top. So when they moved him to linebacker from playing safety right. in high school, it, it really was tough. Because right. if they would have kept him at safety, at 215 pounds, 20 pounds, what he does, he would have killed some people. Right. You know, and it would have been more of a natural thing for him. I think that's what they did to Kiki. They moved him up, and it's just too – things were yeah. happening too fast. Right. So. Yeah. I mean. Those big guys get on you so quick, and you can't yeah. get them it's off hard. you. It's hard to get away from them. Yep. Um, well, I mean – I'm hoping that the uh, no matter where he goes, I'm always there to yeah. support him. But um, he'll end up wherever God wants him. That's and, true. And that's I, true. And, and, I, and I think a lot of young guys need to need to take into consideration as they're continuing their journey toward athletics or professional, whatever right. it is. Uh, remember that more. You know, you, you're just your tool. Yep. Yeah, I'm a tool that's being used. So yep. use that talent wisely. Cogging the wheel. Yeah. Be smart. Use that talent wisely. So you do you have any any like b besides that do you have any other um, for someone who's up and coming like a say a middle school or something that's doubting like should I do this is this right I mean pretty much you kind of just let the the journey unfold yeah. I mean you didn't kind of you didn't really want to you weren't like consistently pushing it you just kind of said whatever happens. Yeah. I mean, you, you, I mean, you got a plan. But. Yeah, you got a plan and you got to recognize what you're good at. Right. R you know, figure out what you love doing. Right. And you're passionate about and what you're good at. And they got to manage their you know, their weaknesses and maximize their strengths. Right. My weakness was grades. Right. So I had to manage it. So it gave me an opportunity to maximize my strength. I had to make 11 points in high school. You had to have a 1.5. Yes. So I had to get 11 points. I knew what I had to do to mm -hmm. get what I had to get right. to be able to do what I was good at doing. Right. So I had to get 11 points to even give myself an opportunity. Right. So I knew C is 3 or C is 2 or B is 3 or A is 4. Yeah. I was like, how many A's? How many A's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I would do the ad and I was like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. I, I got 12. Good. Yeah. That was okay for me because I knew I wasn't going to get an academic scholarship. Yeah. I knew I can get right. an athletic scholarship. So I knew what I was capable of doing. Right. I'm not going and trying to – I mean, I was voted uh, 
one of the class, some FBLA president, right? Just because I was popular. You know what I said? I'm not doing that. Right. I don't even know what, what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Just because you're popular. Mm. So I knew my what I was good at, and right. I maximized that, and I managed the things I, were, I was weak at. So I would tell a young kid, find what you're good at, what you enjoy doing, what you right. love doing, yes. and that what you what you want to do when you're when you you know when you're done with it all. Like, right. I took sports and and turned it into a life after football. Yeah. You know, because that's my team now. It's my gym. Right. When I go in there, the same thing. Say, come on, coach. Let's go. Let's get yeah. us hype. Yeah. Get us up. Let's go. Bring it. Bring it today, yeah. coach. And I'm like, even if I don't feel like it, I'm like, they yeah. need. They need me. Yeah. Pop the trunk on three. Pop the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> jump it out. <laughs> jump it out. Jump it out on three. <laughs> we jump it out. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but, we, but, pop, but we are popping the trunk. Yeah, we're going to pop three. that trunk. I'm going to say that in my class. I'm going to I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> pop it. They're going to say, what? I want to see their reaction. They're going to say, like, what? Like, what? Pop, what is he, pop the trunk. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't even know. Who, who's in the trunk, Clint? <laughs> <laughs> But hey, listen, I I really appreciate you coming down. Oh today. yeah, anytime, I, I, man. I, I want to have you on again. So anytime, you're not we getting away about, from me too far. Yeah, we can talk about anything. We we'll come back, and I, I'd like to go into depth uh, with a little more of your league. You know, your play in the league and stuff yep. like that. Um, maybe I'll have some questions for you by then. Yeah, and, um, stuff like that. But, anytime. Yeah, um, it's it's a it's always a, a privilege to have you around. I. I, on behalf of me, and I, I just I love it when you come back to the school. Yeah, um, I, need, I need to do more. You well, know, it's hard, but, but you do, but you do what you can, and, and, that, and that's hard. that's better, yeah. um, better than nothing. And, yeah. and um, like I love seeing you at the golf golf tournaments yeah. and the, at the games and stuff. I love it when Kiki comes back. Yeah. I love it when all the other kids come back. Yeah. Um, and I hope to have them on the show as well because I want to catch up with them, see see what they're doing these mm-hmm. days. And um, but. Man, like I said, I appreciate you coming down today, and um, best of luck to you in your. You um, as well, buddy. And um, I, I love seeing your videos, man. I love it. Gets me hyped, man. I, I really, I, you know, I'm I'm needing to get into it, but hey, man, when you when you're ready, you'll get. You'll get, you'll get you'll, <laughs> that is true. I don't know if I'm going to be ready, <laughs> but I really appreciate it. And um, hey, we'll, we'll catch up with you next time. And um, I wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank All you. All right, Thank hey you. guys, this has been the Go Blaze Show, and. Um, We'll see you next time.